Welcome everybody to day two of the 12 Days of Christmas Horror. Now today I'm doing a film I never thought I'd do. I kept it in my back pocket for years just in case I ran out of Christmas movies. And I actually haven't ran out of Christmas movies. It's just I watched this movie the other day and I just decided, you know what, I want to review it because it's a movie that I think is brilliant but I never was really that into. Now, this is a movie with a huge following. And the main character has become basically a cult icon, especially among the freaking emo people. I don't get that one at all. Of course, I am talking about Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Now, when people say Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, that brings up the misconception that Tim Burton directed it. This was actually directed by a man named Henry Sillick, but was conceived by Tim Burton when he was an animator at Disney. Yes, Tim Burton once worked for Disney, and I don't mean just as a film director and producer. Now, this stars Chris Sarandon as Jack Skellington, who singing voice was done by none other than Danny Elfman, who also does all the music for the movie. Catherine O'Hare plays Sally. Now, this is not Catherine O'Hare's first Christmas film. She is also in the Home Alone movies as the mom. Now, as I said, this is a movie I never really got into that much. I always thought it was a brilliant film. I just, it wasn't really my kind of movie. And I really did, when I watched it this past time, I enjoyed it much more than I did in previous viewings. I don't know what changed in me or in the film, but, well, obviously, I don't think anything's changed in the film. But maybe it just changed in me. I enjoyed it more than I usually do. Jack Skellington is on a mission. He stumbles across Christmas Town and decides that he likes the feeling that it gives him. And he wants to replicate that feeling in his own Halloween-y kind of way. Being the king of Halloween Town, he kidnaps Santa and takes his place, hoping to bring joy and cheer to children worldwide. Well, things backfire with disastrous and horrific consequences. So guys, I really do enjoy the phenomenal animation style. At the time, this was new. It's been done quite a few times in Tim Burton animated films. But at the time, this was a different kind of animation. And it's done extremely well. Old school hand-drawn mixed with a little bit of computer animation. But for the time, and the time it was, which was 1993... This was extremely innovative stuff. One of the things that I love about this movie, when I try to put my finger on what makes this such a cult classic, what makes this such a huge film? And there's so many things you can point to. There's the great animation, the spooky feel to it, the Halloween Town atmosphere. There's the incredible music and terrific songs. Everything about this screams, you know, Tim Burton, Disney style. And it's brilliant. But I really, truly think that the biggest thing about this movie is the characters, the richness and diversity of the different characters. They're not just throwaway background characters. Every character we get in this is richly thought out and richly developed. The story of... Dr. I think it's Finkelstein and um, Sally, you know, that's a pretty creepy story. That guy's kind of a creep, you know? And then you have Jack Skellington, who is searching to be bigger than what he is, to be more than what he is. And then you have the, the I can't remember what they call themselves together, the triplets of terror or whatever, the three little trick-or-treater kids. They're great. Oogie Boogie is great. Oogie Boogie actually caused some controversy, which... 
I think is absolutely stupid. And as Tim Burton told the people, you're just being way too oversensitive. And he was right. You know what? If every time, and just one quick soapbox moment, okay? One quick moment. So every time that a black person does a character and they have to do a song, that is considered racist? That makes no sense to me. Everybody sings. Everybody dances. Everybody likes to entertain. It's not just a black person thing or a white person thing or anybody else. It's something we all do. There was absolutely nothing racist about Oogie Boogie. That's just stupid. He sounded phenomenal. It was great. I loved it. The way they flesh out all these different characters and give them such a richness it makes you feel like you're really there with them and that you get to know these characters on a personal level. And I think that is what gives this movie its status. I think that's what attaches people to this film. But that's just my opinion. Now, this is a movie I really don't have any cons for to speak of. I know that they've talked for years about a sequel. There's been rumors abound for a sequel. Well, and even the director said as of 2022 he wanted to do a prequel but Tim Burton has come along this very year and said no no sequels, no prequels don't want anything else done in this world so it is what it is, you know money talks eventually we'll see, I mean it's been what, 35 years since Beetlejuice and we're finally getting a sequel to that, just saying guys, I'm really enjoying doing these Christmas reviews for you I hope you're enjoying watching them hope you can hear me. I decided to do it in this little area here because there's so much Christmas stuff right here that it just kind of felt Christmassy. So I decided to do it from the shop and from this particular point in the shop. And I hope you enjoyed it. This is Bronco Juggle saying, I'll see you tomorrow. Merry Christmas. <laughs>